following is a special presentation from 2 News Oklahoma. going to break a tie. This bad boy is either staying right here or it's going 11 miles down the road. A gold ball is sweet, but this thing's even sweeter. Highway 97. To many of us, this is just a road. But for Sand Springs and Sopulpa, this 12-mile stretch of pavement symbolizes a rivalry that has been played out for the past 100 years. And tonight, the stakes couldn't be higher. Tonight, one team will leave with bragging rights. Tonight, a tie will be broken. Each team has won this matchup 45 times. The Sandites enter on the heels of back-to-back -back wins. But for the Chieftains, this is home. And they're looking to keep the trophy right here in Sepulpa. Let's go! This is the American Heritage Bank Highway 97 rivalry. And it all kicks off right now on Friday Night Live. And welcome. Welcome to Friday Night Live, sponsored by U.S. Cellular. All right, what a way to kick off a new season of high school football with a tailgate party. We have an incredible amount of team spirit behind us. We've got the pomp squad. We've got the cheer squad. We've got the blue fans here. They are ready to cheer for their teams, no doubt about it. Hello, everyone. I'm Karen Larson alongside our chief meteorologist, Mike Collier. And of course, we also have our wonderful sports team here, our sports director, Caden McFarlane and reporter Christy Maria. Now, your 2 News Oklahoma first forecast, sponsored by Executive Homes. Now, it is hot outside right now, as we are aware. The Chieftains have a motto, NDR, no deposit, no return. That's the coach's way of saying you get what you put in. And uh, both teams will put in a lot of work tonight, and the action field promises to be as hot as the weather as week one, so we're excited about that. Let's get you started on your forecast as you're heading outside this evening. Temperatures in the mid 90s here in Tulsa. Tulsa at 95 degrees right now. Bartlesville 95, McAllister in the mid 90s. So it is hot and it is humid, but this is typical for the first football game of the season. As we head out to this evening, if you're going out and about, you can see right now Wade's RV Weather Camera Network, mostly fair skies, and you can see the uh, flag flying at uh, half staff uh, this afternoon, but there is a little bit of a breeze. 95 degrees at 6 o'clock, 93 by 7. We won't drop into the upper 80s until we head towards the 8 to 9 o'clock hour. So it's going to take some time. If you're coming out, make sure you're drinking plenty of fluids. Keep yourself hydrated. We'll talk more about the rain chances coming up Sunday night and Monday here in just a few minutes. All right. Thank you, Mike. We have so much more fun from our Friday Night Live here in Sepulpa tonight. We've got a lot coming up. But first, we want to check in on the news of the day with our own Naomi Kitt. She's in the studio now. Naomi. Karen, thanks. An Osage County captain killed in an accident a week ago was laid to rest today. 44-year-old William Hargraves died last Friday morning on US 60 when investigators say a 14-year-old driver hit him on his way to work. Today's service was held at the Ponca City Concert Hall. Hundreds of law enforcement officers from across eastern Oklahoma paid their respects to the family, including OHP troopers, Sand Springs, Tulsa, and Broken Arrow Police, along with the Osage Cove firefighters. The Osage County Sheriff hired Hargraves in 1998 as a jailer. He worked his way up to captain, receiving several promotions throughout the years. The sheriff says the Osage County community was really important to Captain Hargraves. Willie chose to stay in his community with his family and serve the citizens of Osage County, not only carrying the gun and badge, but with the fire department stepping up for the school. After the service, Captain Hargraves was laid to rest at the Grandview Cemetery in Cost City.
Two burglary suspects are in jail tonight after police say their helicopter caught them snooping around cars early this morning. Police tell us this happened near 81st and Memorial just before two this morning. Officers say Amethyst Ruiz and Daniel Drew were seen from up above checking out car doors. Police say they noticed the chopper was watching them and that's when they tried to escape, but they were easily caught. They were caught dead to rights. They knew I think they probably knew immediately that the the birds been watching them the whole time and saw them saw them breaking in the cars or attempting to and getting into some. Police say the suspects admitted they were breaking into cars after they were arrested. Officers say they found a gun inside the suspect's car. Oklahoma State University celebrated the official inauguration of the Cowboys first woman president. Dr. Casey Shrum is the university's 19th president. She actually took the position last July, but like so many other things, her inauguration was delayed by the pandemic. Today's celebration was punctuated with the presidential with the presentation of the presidential medallion, live music and special guests, including Governor Kevin Stitt. Dr. Shrum told the crowd she's proud of OSU's roots as a land grant institution and looks forward to making her vision for the, re for the university into reality in the future. New at 6, local Farm OK plans to clean up dozens of tires in the Arkansas River this weekend. Ben Neal, owner of the company, says he drives the I-44 bridge over the river going into work every day. He's seen these tires for the last two weeks and wanted to do something about it. He's bringing half a dozen employees on Saturday to clean up what they call an eyesore. It's our community, uh, Tulsa. Uh, I mean, I'm a third generation Tulsa. Uh, you know, when people come into Tulsa across this uh, bridge, one of the first things they do is look down that river towards downtown and uh, they see hundreds of tires in the river. It, it, uh, it looks bad on Tulsa. A look from the Sky 2 drone shows many of those tires upright. Neil says he met with the man who did that. It was an effort to draw attention to the tires and make them easier to roll away during cleanup. If you'd like to volunteer, they're meeting under the I-44 bridge on Elwood at 830 tomorrow morning. That's a look at the news making headlines this Friday. Caden, the big story though in Sepulpa, the Highway 97 rivalry. Absolutely, Naomi. Greetings from here in Sepulpa alongside Christy Maria. The Highway 97 rivalry, 96 plane of it. That is Sand Springs versus Sepulpa, separated by only 11 miles. Yep. Look, we oh, yeah. wait all year long. For this right here, for the football season, the high school football season kicking off. This is week zero, and we get a trophy game, a great rivalry game. Chris, Fantastic rivalry game. this is the talk around all of the dinner tables oh, yeah. in both Sand Springs and Sepulpa for weeks and weeks leading up to this ball game. And I tell you what, look, both teams are going for a gold ball this season, absolutely. But the first thing on their minds in, you know, in the back of their minds as they're preparing for the year is getting this trophy. Yeah. And if you have to sum up the rivalry in both communities, yes. there's only one word that can do so. I think if I had to think of one word, it would be a, like a sense of pride. We just kind of use that trophy and use it as motivation and, and we're going to be ready to go. Like Coach Holt said, it's definitely about pride. You know, you don't want to just say, you just don't want to have let Sand Springs have the bragging rights on you because then they're going to carry that for a whole year, especially this new trophy. Very cool. You just, I want it. I want it up in the locker room. Yeah. All right, so they've <laughs> played this game for nearly 100 years, and it is tied, as you heard in the show open. 45 wins apiece with five ties. Sand Springs has won the last two. They made the state semifinals one year ago. Bobby Klink's got it rolling, but he does have a lot of players to replace. That's absolutely true, but you know what? 13 guys in the senior class have been playing together since they were eight years old, and the one thing they've wanted to do since they were eight years old is win against Sepulpa their senior year. This rivalry is deeply rooted. It's the greatest feeling in the world. It's the biggest game of the year. It's everything that we live for. We, we've always hated Sepulpa, and Sepulpa's always hated us. It's just how it is, and Highway 97, we want to bring that trophy home, and it's for this town. For the town. Absolutely. There, there you go. You're going to have full highlights and post-game reaction for us coming up tonight at 10. we got a whole bunch of games. We're going to talk about those coming up later in sports. It is our FNL tailgate from here in Sepulpa, one of our great communities in green country. Karen, 
We're having a lot of fun. I know oh, you're yeah. having even more fun. How about the <laughs> backdrop behind you? Oh my gosh, are these students amazing or what? They are so great to turn out and show their team spirit tonight. And we're going to have more from the Pump Squad, Cheer Squad, the bands. We'll be seeing more of them. We'll also be hearing from Mike uh, Collier on his forecast coming up. Plus, our Julie Chin has an incredible story tonight. It's our spotlight on the community. She's going to take us behind the scenes of a million dollar project to make a part, transform part of Route 66 into a Christmas destination. Stay with us. All right, welcome back to the Georgia Collins Stadium. That is the drum line from Sepulpa's big blue band you're hearing as we count down to kick off. They are amazing. Now, we are celebrating the start of the football season, of course, but it's really another season that's the talk of this town. And our Julie Chin shows us it is positively Oklahoma. I can't wait to see what it looks like. Will Berry and this group of elves are creating a Christmas gift unlike any around. The dream is to have Sepulpa on the map as a Christmas destination. A dream that started in the summer of 2019, now a Christmas wish come true. With the Route 66 Christmas shoot, a festive, twinkling, colossal Christmas canopy. People are able to come, get out of their cars, walk underneath, and just really enjoy the Christmas spirit. Inside the Sepulpa workshop, construction's been underway for over a year. This, a tiny taste of the really big build. There are 35,400 feet of lights. The shoot will feature 10 theme sections ranging from religious to Route 66, Christmassy to Candyland. It's taken hundreds of volunteers, thousands of hours to create this Christmas magic. It's not done with a professional construction company or decoration company. This is legitimately a total community project. That includes over a hundred student athletes. We are just screwing light bulbs into all these like green rods and stuff and it was supposed to take like three hours but because so many of us like showed up and just had a good system it only took an hour. And this $800,000 project made possible by the giving spirit. It is a project that is totally privately funded. The Christmas shoot will be constructed in October right here on Dewey or old Route 66 in Sepulpa. It'll start on Main Street and run five blocks. That's about three football fields long all the way to the courthouse. Lights on will be November 3rd for all of you to come out and see. There will be activities every Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, the whole month of November and December. The city hopes you'll spend the day, then stay for the twinkling lights, because when it comes to Christmas in Sepulpa, <laughs> the more the merrier. The dream is to have thousands of people walking under this chute, being happy and spreading cheer. In Sepulpa, Julie Chin, 2 News, Oklahoma. All right, thank you, Julie. And Julie tells us that once the Christmas shoot opens in November, it's going to stay open all the way through New Year's, so we'll all have plenty of time to go and visit the shoot. Now, if you'd like to find out more about this, go to our website, kgrh.com, and click on Positively Oklahoma. Now, your 2 News Oklahoma weather, sponsored by Executive Homes. Well, it is hot, but that's typical for this time of year. Are you all ready for the game tonight? Yeah! All right. They are excited, first game of the season. Of course, it always starts off hot, and then by the end of the season, we're all in jackets because by then, it's chilly. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at your forecast as we go through the next couple of hours. Temperatures are going to generally fall back down lower 80s, so it will take some time, but those temps will begin to drop. Even though it's hot right now, temperatures generally in the 90s across northeast Oklahoma, uh, so it will be quite toasty. If you're going to the lake, Oh boy, yeah, what a great weekend, at least for Saturday, to be going to the water as uh, it'd be a great day to cool off mid 90s. Now, there will be a chance for some showers and storms coming in late Sunday into Monday. Uh, so that will be an improvement as that will help bring temperatures down. It will help bring cooler weather into Northeast Oklahoma. All right, looking at uh, the 10 day rainfall, we can see that temperatures uh, will help be held check because of the 80s. But look at this, about a half inch to an inch of rainfall here in Northeast Oklahoma. Uh, so that would be beneficial. If you get underneath one of the heavier thunderstorms to develop, you will see heavier amounts and this is indicating, but at least we still have that chance for storms coming to the area. And that increases late Sunday, Monday, lingers on into Tuesday, 
as we see a chance for rainstorms. You all want some rain? Yes. <laughs> some are like, no, I don't want your rain. I don't blame them. 95 degrees with partly cloudy skies on your Saturday. 94, a chance for storms coming in Sunday night into Monday morning. And you can see still mid 90s for most of Sunday. Now, right now it's hot. It's uh, 95 with southeast wind at 13 miles per hour. We climbed to 97 this afternoon, so one of the hotter days of the past couple weeks here in Northeast Oklahoma after starting off very nice in the upper 60s. Now, this weekend, we're going to start off with mid 70s for your Saturday morning. Bartlesville 71, McAllister 72, far eastern portions of Oklahoma in the lower 70s. Heading towards the afternoon hours, expect a hot and humid afternoon, mid 90s here in Tulsa. Uh, lower 90s in northwest Arkansas. Could see a few isolated storms down in southeastern portions of Oklahoma, uh, but chances rain tomorrow pretty slim. And those chances go up, and that will help bring temperatures down the upper 80s from Monday. A little bit of rebound in temperatures Wednesday, and then slightly a big or a little bit of a dip in temps as we head towards the end of next week with temperatures upper 80s, and then we look towards Memorial Day week or Labor Day weekend, I should say. Uh, temperatures in the 90s for highs for your Saturday, Sunday, and Labor Day Monday. All right, we have so much more, so much more fun from the Sepulpa Chieftains. That's all coming up right after this. Welcome into sports, everybody, on the first high school football Friday night of the year 2022. What a glorious occasion Absolutely this is. It. We are here in Sepulpa. Sepulpa taking on Sand Springs. It's the Highway 97 rivalry. Couple of players you're looking to watch in this matchup tonight, Chris. For Sepulpa, give me Marco Smith. 1,100 yards rushing in just half of Sepulpa's game last season. He yeah. told me he's got his eyes on the single season Sepulpa rushing record. For Sand Springs, the guy who wants to tackle him, Drake Fain, he's got his eye on the single season tackles record for the Sandites. That's going to be a matchup to watch, absolutely. As we the Sandites looking to make it three in a row yep. in this rivalry. Some other great games, probably none better in terms of compelling matchups yep. than what we have going on at Holland Hall. Holland Hall, two-time defending state champion, taking on Lincoln Christian. These two teams have met in the state title game the last yes. two years. They are 2-0 and in the OSSAA in winning gold yeah. balls. And Lincoln Christian, they've beaten twice. You talk about the best budding rivalry in all of green country, this is it. And these guys are excited to play each other week one. Holland Hall won the last matchup. This one, not as important as a gold ball game, but you know what? Both teams want to win this real bad. We have a ton of respect for them. Um, they've beat us the last two state championship games, so we know how good they are and what they, what they bring to the table. It's fun, they're a really good team, really well coached, and every time you go up against them, you know it's going to be a battle, so we're looking forward to another one. We played some very tough games. Obviously, the state championship last year was very good win either way. Um, they're a very good football program, and so we're going to find out a lot next Friday night. Okay, we had one game last night, and it was a biggie. <laughs> More than 21,000 in attendance to watch Bixby in its first game as a team in Class 6A1 put 49 points on Owasso, 49-14 the final, 50th win in a row for the Spartans. You know what? A bunch of guys put this team on their backs on the offensive side as the defense really held on to it. But I looked at quarterback Connor Kirby. Oh, he man. split times with Austin Havens. Broke it open. He absolutely broke it open. The play of the game was an 85-yard touchdown run. Connor Colton told me after the game that was the longest run of his career. He took me through that play. Uh, they like to roll to the field, so we put two, two uh, receivers out there, and we just Max pulled into the boundary. We've been working on that all week. We knew it was going to work, and it really just opened up. We've been practicing all week. Coach Tyrepin had a good game plan for us. I mean, we just really went out and got the job done. All the scores and highlights on FNL tonight at 10:15. Here's Mike Collier with your game day forecast. And we are looking at a great Saturday for game days. I know my son's got flag football games already. Uh, it is that time of year where even the youth are uh, beginning to uh, get going. You can see temperatures in the mid-90s for your Saturday. Sunday, 94 degrees with a chance for a few showers and thunderstorms. Hot 
this weekend. Temperature of the 90s. Chance for storms coming in Sunday morning. Let's go to Katie and Chris to wrap this up. Who, who would want to be anywhere other than this right here? An absolutely this is awesome. perfect spot. I love the backdrop for you guys.